I am Anil Kumar and here is probably one of the most difficult questions on derivative of the function. Determine the derivative of f of x equals to x times absolute x at x equals to 0. I like you to pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestion. Now whenever we are dealing with absolute function, we should treat absolute function as a piecewise function and rewrite the function. That is the very basic which we need to appreciate. So f of x is equals to x absolute value of x. Now what is absolute x? Absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and minus x if x is less than 0. Therefore, we could write the function f of x as equal to, so if I replace with x when, so two pieces, right? So I'll say x times x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and x times minus x if x is less than 0. So that gives us the function f of x as equal to x square for x greater than or equal to 0 and minus x square for x less than 0, right? So that is how the function is. So one part is appreciate the function. Take some time, enjoy this part of the video. Okay. We could actually solve this graphically also. Let me show you graphical solution. Most of you might be thinking that the derivative does not exist, but it does exist, right? So let's see how. So if I sketch my function now, I know if it, like, x is greater than or equal to 0, it is x squared. So it's kind of a graph which is like this, perfect. But when x is less than 0, this minus x squared. So this graph reflected downwards will give me graph like this as is very clear, I should say apparent, from this rough sketch, the function's derivative at 0 should be what? It seems to be a horizontal line. So we are expecting 0 as our answer, right? So the derivative of the function, which also represents the slope of the tangent line, seems to be 0 at x equals to 0, right? So I hope that gives you a hint. So you can now pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestion. So here we are. f of x is now a piecewise function. So what we will do now, that we will split this part of the page into two portions. As you can see here, I should be dealing with two functions now. If x is greater than or equal to 0, then my function f of x is equals to x square, right? If x is greater than or equal to 0. However, if x is less than 0, then the function is minus x square. Do you see that? So this is that part, correct? Therefore, when I'm trying to find the limit, I have to find two different limits. You can say limit from the left side and limit from the right side. It makes sense, correct? So we have f dash x as equals to limit when h approaches 0, right? So, but this time it is approaching from the left side of the function, this particular function. Anyway, the formula is same, x plus h whole square, I mean, no, x plus h minus f of x, will substitute x plus this point later over h. On the right side, the derivative should be same, which is limit h approaches 0. So if the derivative exists, both the values should be same, right? So limit of the function f of x plus h minus f of x over h, correct. So that is what we need to find out. So let's calculate. So we are interested in x approaching 0. So we x equals to 0 for us. So we'll replace 0 plus h in our equation, which is x squared. So we get this part as limit, h approaches 0. So if I write 0 plus h in minus x squared, what do I get? At minus 0. And when I am approaching from the negative side, I prefer to write h as minus h because I do not want to take h on the right side because I'm taking on. So it's slightly before that, right? So and the function is x squared, so minus x, minus, if I write 0 here, then I get uh, minus of 0, so which is 0 itself, right, divided by h, right. 
So that gives us limit. AH approaches zero. And what do we get here? So when I open this bracket, I get minus H over minus, okay, so minus H square, this minus, right? So minus, this becomes square. So minus H square over H, which is limit. H approaches zero. One of these H cancels, so I get minus H. So when I'm approaching zero from the negative side, is it okay? So if I substitute zero here, what do I get? I get zero as my limit. So as I'm approaching zero from the left side, the limit of the function, rate of change I should say, the derivative of the function is zero. Let's do the same calculations when we are approaching h from the right side, right? So it look, looks like it should be limit, h approaches zero from positive side, x is 0 for us, right? We are writing x equals to 0. So 0 plus h whole square. So we have 0 plus h whole square minus 0 square divided by h. And that is limit h approaches 0. And that is clearly h square minus 0 over h, right? So we can cancel and rewrite this as limit h approaches 0 over h is h, right? Substituting h equals to 0, we get 0. Do you see that? So clearly, both the limits for the derivative, the rate of change, or the slope of the tangent is zero. So what do we get? So we get limit of this particular function, f dash at zero, which is f dash of zero, is definitely equals to zero, right? So, so the derivative of the function, f of x equals to x times absolute x at x equals to zero is indeed zero, which you can now confirm algebraically also. I would like you to go through this video, understand the concept. This is probably a very difficult question and understanding these concepts are important. Thank you and all the best.